I am here with Rocky Romero. Rocky, who's a very busy man right now. Rocky, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Uh, glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for thanks for being on. I, I see you guys uh, doing tons of media. You got Talk, talk and Shop Mania coming up this weekend. Uh, what has that process been like? Uh, you're running your own show. It's going to be on Fight. Uh, how has uh, the whole experience been? I mean, in the beginning of this, I mean, it was really all the brainchild of Gallows and kind of he kind of forced us into it, kind of. Like, he basically, when the, when the guys got let go from WWE, he, uh, like, the next day or a couple of days after, he called us and was like, I'm going to run a pay-per-view from my backyard. You guys are either in or out. And we're like, uh, <laughs> wait, what are you talking about? And they kind of explained what, you know, what he wanted to do. And uh, we were like, well, that's so talking shop. We should definitely do this. And uh, so, you know, we were on board and, it felt like it was going to, you know, like it was so long ago, like, you know, getting this thing ready and getting the talent ready and, and, and booking the flights and doing, I mean, like literally we did everything. It was such a, you know, it, it like the three of us did it, you know, did it all with the, with, you know, help from our, our, our couple of friends and family, of course, our wives, uh, you know, really helped us out. But um, it, it's like a small business that we've basically grown, uh, you know, in a very short amount of time, you know, basically from when these guys got, let go uh to here we are now running a pay-per-view and we filmed it in gals's backyard and it's probably the craziest thing i've ever seen in my life and i think people are really going to either love it or hate it i uh and i want to get uh talking more about the pay-per-view here in a second but i also wanted to ask you uh, how it felt being back in action you faced tom lawler at um, at new japan uh, lions break collision uh what was that like getting back in the ring after after some time um it felt good i mean it, I, I didn't mind having a break, you know, a time off. Like um, I was doing another interview this week and I, and I was talking about like, okay, well, when did you have like this long of a layover? I was like, 2006, maybe, you know, I've just been going and right. going and traveling and traveling and it hasn't really stopped. So, um, you know, part of me uh, was, was, was kind of like, whoa, I needed to take this break to kind of, you know, refresh the batteries a bit, you know, and, and just kind of, you know, recharge uh, mentally and physically. And uh, I felt good getting back in there. I definitely um, feel like I, I wish I could be training a little harder to get kind of get ready in the process, but um, I'm definitely uh, going to be back in the gym once at like hard in the gym after this weekend. So once we get past uh, talking shop of mania, then I'm going to, I can focus a little bit more on, uh, on doing the in-ring stuff, you know? Yeah. Well, well, that's great. New Japan, obviously, right now, they are the only company that has fans in attendance. Um, they are told to, to stay quiet, to clap. Now, what do you think that experience is like? And do you see that changing? Because I know there is uh, a little bit of an uptick of COVID cases in Japan right now. You're right. I think that things will continue the way that they are. Uh, so far, you know, so good, you know, it seems like with the shows and as long as... Um, you know, people are feel safe and people are safe at the shows, then I think that they will continue. And then more importantly, you know, even the, and the wrestlers and staff are safe. So um, I think everybody's done a really good job and of the fans of respecting the, you know, you know, to, to try to not to shout, even though they wanted to, especially over the, the stuff that's happened uh, in storylines over the last couple of uh of weeks you know with evil turning like right. could you imagine obviously you know osaka joe hall going bat ish right. crazy <laughs> <laughs> feel free you to know? cuss if you want yeah, okay go, go. So bat shit crazy you know um in a different situation you know so i think um i i, I think it's I, I, you know kudos to the fans who have really respected that because you can see how much they want they don't want this to be taken away you know and they they want to be able to continue to uh to be a part of the uh the shows live so uh it's it's cool i think um you know it might be like this for a while you know who knows to say how long i mean we're all kind of just going week by week here you know i feel like the whole world is yeah. Um, so, you know, uh, it could be like this for another six months, it could be like this for another year, you know, um, but either way, I'm glad that um, they were able to come back the way that they did too, you know. Uh, I thought, it, I, I'm glad that they didn't rush it, you know, and and, um, and even though I did I did think the, uh, the no fan shows that they have were pretty good, you know. Uh, right. I think New, the New Japan style is kind of like, like, 
the best style I think for no fans because it's so much about your opponent and what's going on in the ring than uh than you know like other shenanigans you know you know that that go into professional wrestling you know right um and and with that uh you now you you guys have openly talked about uh, Gallus and Anderson now they're with Impact uh, but they've also been talking with New Japan and and, and they're likely doing both uh, do they, I mean, I guess it's uh, probably impossible to say, but is there any kind of a, a time frame that they're looking at as far as uh, maybe I making mean, a, their debut right. show in the U.S. or? or I mean, it's really hard to say, you know, at this point. Um, you know, I, I'm sure that those guys would rather debut back in Japan because that's mm -hmm. the place that they left, you know, probably before coming to the U.S. But I mean, who's to say? I mean, it's so hard to say right now. Uh, like I said, you know, it's it's week by week at this point, and uh, the borders are still closed for you know for even for guys who have uh, you know uh, certain visas like uh, like uh, you know I'm a longstanding you know visa holder, and uh, I still can't get back into the country at this point. So um, you know, I mean, as soon as the the borders open up, I mean, I think that'll be a good telling tale of you know the possibilities of having you know. All your favorite wrestlers come back and compete in uh, in the Japan version of New Japan, but uh, uh, until then, uh, you know, we'll see what uh, happens in the next couple of weeks in the U.S. Because there's a lot of big news going on with that. Right, and uh, hopefully, knock on wood, there is a lot of talk of uh, a vaccine, uh, promising signs on a vaccine. So right. we'll see. Yeah, everything just seems crazy and up in the air right now. But um. Uh, you were kind of a, a conduit between Gallows and Anderson and their negotiations with, with AEW and New Japan back when their contracts were up uh, last year. Um, you, you had noted on Talking Shop Mania, the podcast, that the Young Bucks weren't very happy uh, when Gallows and Anderson uh, decided to sign with WWE. Um, have you kept in touch with the Bucks during this period? And it seems like it's all up water under the bridge. They were on Being the Elite and everything. Yeah, uh, you know, I mean, you know, I don't talk to the Bucks as much as I, I did in the past, obviously, you know, because we're kind of, uh, that's just kind of the way the wrestling business goes. When you're working with somebody and you're with them every day constantly, you mean, you know, you talk a lot and then all of a sudden, you know, you're, once you jump out of this pool, you go into another pool, you know, it, you know, you, you just kind of, uh, you know, end up doing your own thing. But um, I, I keep in touch with them a little bit, you, you know, we'll, we'll talk by text here and there, or if I see their show or something, I'll say, hey, you know, that was awesome or like I love the way you guys did that or whatever and um uh but I, I think they're just doing an amazing job with AEW they're 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 killing it they really really are and um obviously uh I, th I think that they've handled how they've handled the COVID situation uh I I think that they're just they're the they're the they're the ones to look at because I feel like they're setting the standard in America of how to do it right uh, and where we're that you would think the biggest company and the big money company should be the ones you know kind of setting the standard and I feel like in some some ways they have they've done well but in some ways they've completely dropped the ball but AEW has picked it up so I think it's it's really cool to see how um, how this has all affected it kind of really leveled the playing ground I think a lot and I, I'm curious to see how it'll come out after this because right. I feel like AEW is gonna like really have taken this time and and then once we come out of covid they're gonna like blow up like yeah. to the level that you know and i i don't think most people really see it coming just yet you know so um kudos to them uh sorry i forgot i started rambling i forgot what the question was <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's water under the bridge right uh, yeah yeah, uh, yeah 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 i think it's all cool now you know for the most part especially with the bucks i mean you got to remember like uh the Bucks and Gals and Anderson go back so far, right? You know, mm. the, the original Bullet Club. And, it, you know, this was a time where nobody was a name yet, mm -hmm. you know? And, you know, the Bucks weren't a name. Gals and Anderson really weren't a name. I mean, Gals was probably the biggest name, you know? And he was, you know, because he was Festus and then he was Gallows, you know, in WWE. And then, uh, and then kind of just everything exploded. And, uh, you know, everybody became who we are. They Bullet Club. And um, so... There's deep roots there. I don't think that, uh, you know, a business decision, especially when it comes to families and why they did it, uh, will be, you know, something to, to hate each other in the long term for. 
Um, you know, I think it's all love in the end. We're all, we're all having the same struggle, you know, we're all trying to climb the ladder, you know? So I feel like, uh, you know, they're, they're pretty understanding and they're, they're good, good human beings, you know? Yeah. Um, you mentioned, uh, talking about the AEW presentation during this pandemic. And I think what you guys are doing, it's, it's very different with talking, uh, with talking shop of mania. It's <laughs> Luke Gallus's backyard. Right. Uh, you have a boner yard match, which right. I, I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I think it's just really smart as far as you, you're doing a wrestling show, billing it as the worst pay-per-view ever. And you're doing it not with the traditional setting with the empty ring that, you know, you know, with the empty arena, but right. it's just something completely different that we haven't, we haven't seen during this pandemic. We're trying to keep expectations real low. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like if you keep them low, then you won't expect too much. But um, I, I, I'm, I'm going to be honest, though. The Boner Yard match, as crazy as it sounds, is, is a work of art. And uh, I swear, we had Enzo. Enzo was, is, a, is a part of this. And uh, Enzo was watching the, this whole thing. Because like, we, fi- we basically filmed, like, the first day we filmed for, like, I don't know, like, 12, 14 hours. It was a long long day right mm-hmm. and uh so we we shot from the morning on and we finally got to the uh when it got to sunset in those boneyard match time and, and you know we we did it uh enzo was watching and i think he had just gotten there like because we had flew him in the night he was on the second day really and he and he watched it and and then there was like a pause at one point we, we stopped for something and he just started applauding he goes and he got all teary-eyed and he was like He's like, this is this is your swan song. <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's like but you could see like how much Gals and Anderson put. You guys will see how much they put into you know creating this this thing. And even though it's a spoof and it's a joke, how much like love they put in, and how much you could see over the last couple of years their frustrations that they were like so their performance is so on. Like as a wrestler, I know it's gonna be, it sounds goofy, but like. Uh, like if this was like, you know, complete, like an, like an actor, you know, having their moment and like, maybe they created a show or something like they were just like solely into it. And they just have this, these, just each line that they hit are just these amazing one liners. And they're just, they're doing it on the fly. And it's, it's just amazing. It's just so amazing. Like <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm watching, I'm just like in awe, like. How long did it take after, after you filmed the, I, I believe you filmed it a few weeks ago. Uh, to put everything together and to uh, and to you know, the post produce the show, couple of weeks. Yeah, I mean, uh, like for the most part, we had a cut in about twenty four hours. Later, or so we had the first cut, and then uh, and then we've been kind of fine tuning it ever since as much as we could. And um, uh, but yeah, I mean, then when you're first time, and this is a learning experience because we've never worked with pay per view dis- distributors. Uh, ever so like they're very finicky on like how they want certain things and stuff like that and we're like we shot this in gals's back garden like, <laughs> like this shouldn't even be on pay-per-view <laughs> and uh so i don't know what our rating ended up being because i'm sure it's pretty mature but right. <laughs> it's definitely not for kids so uh but, does fight uh, tv do they set that up the rating uh no fight tv is super cool they're easy they're, yeah. they're pretty easy about it. Um, but the, the pay-per-view companies, I know that they're, they're a little, um, they're a little bit more difficult, but, um, but we got approved somehow. I don't know <laughs> how we did it. If we got approved. So uh, yeah, it's going to be on, on uh, all the like major uh, in demand, on demand pay-per-view in Canada and the U S and uh, direct TV. And I believe so. And it's going to be, I don't know. It's crazy. I can't believe it. I can't believe we pulled it off. Yeah. <laughs> well um when i saw because uh, i had heard of some of the names that were going to be on there and it, it's just the most eclectic group of, of talent uh that you could ask for you have of course yourself gallows anderson uh heath miller brian meyer uh brian myers chava guerrero Kozlov, who i haven't seen forever i can't wait uh, mike bennett maria canellis uh, the Rock and Roll Express, David Penzer, Rhino, D'Lo Brown, Willie Mack, uh, Johnny Swinger, Scott Diamores, Teddy Long. Uh, how difficult was it to, especially in, in this period, how difficult was it to get uh, this group of talent together? You know, to be honest, like... The I, Flock, you, I got to mention The Flock, yeah, who the we flock, haven't seen yeah. since the... I mean, you know, I mean, we were, we were sweating it because when, when we started to plan this, it, it looked... 
uh, like we were going to be somewhat out of this kind of situation. It was going to be like the cases are going to be low. We didn't realize that it was the, the second spike was going to happen so soon, right? So like when we were planning, it was like, oh, this will be a good time because things will have really have settled. Everything will be all right. Then, you know, fast forward, it's like the week of, and uh, the day we arrived to, to, to Georgia is the same day that Georgia went back into phase one. And we're like, oh, shit. Right. <laughs> like, this is, this is bad. So, um, but, you know, we were able to, you know, we had a protocol in place and we had been working on it already. So we had COVID kits and, uh, you know, Gallus' wife is a registered nurse. So she was able to, uh, you know, check everybody's temperature every day and be on it, constantly passing around, uh, you know, stuff to clean uh, your hands. And we had masks and everything. So, so it ended up being all right. But uh, I was worried too about like just contacting talent to see if they would want to do it. To be honest, everybody had been so cooped up for so long. They were like, yes, get me out of my house now. Get me. <laughs> Mike and Maria were like, we love being home. We're so happy to be home with our, with our kids. But they're like, we have not moved for three months. Like, get us out of here. So like, <laughs> they were like super stoked to get out. So, um, and it, it all ended up working out great. I mean, like, you know, no, we had no issues of anybody getting sick. Um, you know, everybody traveled safely. And, you know, I'm, I'm glad that too, like we had the couple months, like I, I was talking to a lot of friends and seeing how they had been traveling during the uh, this time, you know, people who worked for WWE and AEW who had been traveling and it was like, okay, well, what, you know, what, what should we, what should you be doing? And, you know, I was like, oh, no, you, you know, keep your mask on, do this, you know, like try not to use the facilities unless you need to try, you know, so like I, I was trying to give pointers to anybody who had any extra questions, like this is what I heard. This is what I'm going to do for my protocol as I travel. So I was trying to be as helpful as possible, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you've been, a uh, so first of all, with all that talent, you have the rock and roll, uh, rock and roll express and, you know, one of the greatest tag teams of all time, got the flock, uh, which was a staple on nitro. How, how long have you, you've been involved in the business a long time, but how long have you been a wrestling fan? All my life. Uh, as far as I can remember, to be honest, as far as I can remember, I used to watch as a, as a kid. So my parents, they would, you know, work Monday through Friday, but they always had extra stuff to do on Saturdays. So um, they would, they would often go into to work on Saturdays and uh, I would stay with my grandma and my grandma's like an old Puerto Rican lady. So she used to watch wrestling like in New York city, like back in the day right like because she didn't really speak english when she first came to america so like obviously you know like a lot of uh people they they can watch wrestling because you don't really need to know english to watch that so um so she would watch wrestling she became a fan and every saturday superstars came on uh what is it like 1 p.m or whatever it was after wmac masters i'll never forget and then uh so uh she used to make um she was diabetic so she used to make sugar-free like jello and ice cream and then she would like give it to me and that was like our th ritual we'd be eating jello and ice cream and which is kind of weird now that i think about it and then like, <laughs> good. It was it. <laughs> and then uh and then we'd watch uh superstars and that's it, like she would be so like into it where she would like take off her her chancla like her shoe <laughs> throw it at the tv and, and like at the bad guys and she would like be all in an uproar through the tv and i think that that got me excited and that energy was uh what got me kind of attracted to wrestling and and i and then i just never stopped i i took like a little break right before like somewhere like right like early 90s and then i got back into it like mid 90s right before the boom happened yeah and, yeah so um like that was gold dust and all that stuff like right around there yeah yeah so when you were saying superstars, was this like the Hogan Piper era, the Hogan Andre era, the Hogan so yeah, Savage? Yeah, like, well, yeah. So it would be like Hogan Warrior era. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, that was like really like, that was probably the biggest match that I could remember was like Hogan Warrior. And that was yeah. probably what, like six or seven or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's around the time I started watching too, yeah. a couple years ago. Is that like 89 or something? Or is yeah, that, that, like that was 89. Yeah. Um, I had started watching in 87, but 89, yeah, uh, yeah that's... Yeah, all those yeah, couple yeah. years, like late 80s, early 90s, like like right around that, yeah. Yeah. Um, who were some of your favorites going, uh, while you were growing up? 
Warrior, Warrior Hogan, top of the list. Um, when they went, when they went at it, I was pure Warrior. I used to tie shoelaces around my my little biceps at that time and and paint my face and run around the house like just lifting things over my head and pressing them. Um, <laughs> Uh, who else? Uh, JYD, oh, Tito nice. Santana, uh, The Rockers. Who else did I like? Um, to be honest, I liked it. like everybody. I was just into, oh, Ravishing. I liked Ravishing Rick Rude, but I couldn't understand why, even though I hated him. <laughs> I was like, oh, this guy's just a good performer. Now I realize it now. But <laughs> I was like, that was Randy Savage like when he turned guy. heel. I was like, wow, yeah. why do I love this guy? Why is he my favorite? <laughs> What's that say about me? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, but him just coming to the ring with the and doing the promo and taking <laughs> off the robe with Bobby Heaney and Bobby Heaney was so good and then it's like I don't know. There's just something so cool. It's like I kind of want to be this guy, but he's such an asshole. But like I don't know. He was cool. Um, obviously, the business has changed a lot since that era. Are there cer certain aspects from that era or or the late '90s that you think could be brought back um, or is it just is it just a, a different time? I think you know there's some elements that are rooted in that you know, and I and like I I think even to go, uh, you know I I think like New Japan now is kind of very rooted in the '80s. You know what I'm saying? I think if you really break it down, mm -hmm. uh, I, I feel like you know there's always like a good guy bad guy element like that's mm -hmm. super important, right? And then uh, you'll have it's so funny it's just kind of different like. And back in the day, like when a a bad guy would, you know, screw over a good guy or say like interference, like in the the evil uh, Okada match or the evil Naito match, um, then usually, you know, you know, you would give me, you know, okay, boo, you know, he's cheating, boo. And, but now it's like more like wrestling purists being like, it, it wasn't, it, why wasn't it a clean finish? But it's it's the same kind of heat. Right. It, you know, it really is. It's just, you know, like wrestling peers are just not getting it. <laughs> like, <laughs> like it's the same kind of heat it's, and, and right. the, the, they're still going to come back for more because they want to see the, uh, the clean match, you know? So I feel like um, it's just kind of uh, presented different and we all have a, a different way of taking it in as fans, but I, I think it's pretty much the same thing. And I, I think there's, uh, you know, quite a bit of characters and stuff that, that, could fit in the 80s it's just kind of a modernized version of it you know mm -hmm. um and then but also i think it's also of course the 90s has a you know 90s new japan has a, has its influence there too yeah uh new japan ha had has been working with roh for a long time uh do you, is that relationship still going i know they were going to do a show earlier this year uh, i don't know if that yeah you know that that got dropped because of covid but uh are they, yeah. uh, they're still working together? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, ROH and New Japan still working together. I think it's been hard because obviously with the COVID situation, you can't really see uh, right. you know, New Japan stars on, on ROH or ROH in, in Japan. So, um, but uh, no, it's, still, it's definitely still going on. And, um, you, know, uh, I, you know, obviously we saw like Tom Waller, who's an MLW guy, uh, be on Lions Break Collision. And, you know, you know we're talking about Carl, and and uh and doc possibly being a part of new japan there have you know impact contracts so um and then there's been AEW guys that have showed up on on new japan too so i i, I think the world you know the world is kind of changing and just opening up like i'm not saying like everybody's going to be like the best of friends and and have maybe even the relationship that roh and new japan has had so um but i i definitely think that especially with the COVID situation that opportunities are, are definitely opening up and, and people are, you know, you kind of had to change your, your, your mindset a little bit um, because, you know, we're all trying to get past this, this situation, you know, and, and, and we're not being able to have live events hurts us all. Right. So, so instead of fighting each other, I think it's, it's easier just to kind of work together in a way to to you know to get through this and then I, I i think that'll show you know after covid is is over then hopefully that will continue yeah because there has been the gap between impact and new japan as well for for a while now do you see that now with gallison and anderson doing both do you see that kind of being bridged a little bit or i, I think it'll i think it'll definitely help in a positive way absolutely absolutely uh you know scott demore was was very helpful in this talking shop of mania and, and really helping us out uh, an impact as well. So, um, 
you know, I, I, I hope so. And I think that if anybody could really bridge the gap, if there's any kind of talents that could, I think Gals and Anderson would be, would be the ones. And then just so far that, you know, Impact is um, so willing to do whatever they can to, to make sure that Gals and Anderson are, are, are happy with and, and being able to work with New Japan when that time comes. So I feel like, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's definitely a step in the right direction for sure. Yeah. And speaking of the gaps, are you surprised that the gap still had, wasn't quite mended between AEW and New Japan? Um, I mean, that's a tough one, you know. I mean, I mean definitely, um, I think there's been a lot of progress, you know, and it, it's taken some time, uh, you know, to kind of happen. You know, I, I'm, I feel like one day there will be, you know, some, you know, some kind of relationship there that, that people can say, uh, you know, I don't know when that'll mm-hmm. happen, you know, and, and, uh, you know, obviously there's some, some feelings on both sides, you know, and, uh, I don't blame anybody, you know, I, you know, I'm definitely a person who's in the middle and, and, and I, I feel like, uh, you know, I understand both sides and, and how they feel, uh, about it, but, um, never say never, man. And I, I think that especially kind of like coming out of this, and and where AEW is going to be and, and New Japan and where New Japan is going to be. Um, you know, they're two very strong companies with a lot of amazing talent uh, that I think one day people will want to see how those those two will interact. So uh, we'll just kind of have to wait and see. I mean, I feel like that's the big one and the big question on everybody's mind. If it will happen, when it will happen. Uh, we'll see, man. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, there is, there is some, uh, you know, some feelings on both sides, some deep feelings on it so it's like you know i don't know we'll see we'll see yeah, yeah. um I, I know you only have a few more minutes so i wanted to get a couple more questions in um yeah. one yeah, you obviously are in chaos the good brothers were in the bullet club uh how serious does new japan take keeping factions publicly apart very serious so uh so i mean yeah we've kind of talked about that too it's like you know, may, there there could be uh, you know some something in the future where maybe talking shop and mania or talking shop doesn't uh, doesn't happen or with Rocky. You know, I mean honestly. So I mean, I mean that's kind of something that uh, I feel like we'll probably have to take on when the time comes. But uh, you know, because I'm pretty serious about you know New Japan as well and and kind of how the factions run. And we kind of did the old one. Back in the old days, kind of, you know, this was before, you know, New Japan was privy to all these podcasts and what we were doing. So we kind of did it under the radar. Um, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. But, if, you know, obviously, if they're going to be Bullet Club and, and I'm in chaos, that might be a bit of an issue. So um, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> something, something we're thinking about. I'll try not to think that far ahead because there's we still got to go through so much to get there. I feel like so. Right. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, to be honest, it, that you're the first first person that's actually asked that. So I yeah. feel like that's a really good question because it's something that we we definitely have talked about a lot. You know, over the last couple of months, you know, and it wasn't a problem because those guys were in WWE before, right. so we weren't even thinking about that. You know. Yeah. So. All right, makes sense. Uh, when we're recording this, it's it's a Friday. Talking Shop Mania is going to be on uh, on Saturday, and also uh, New Japan is holding a press conference for New Japan Strong, uh, starting every Friday night, starting August seventh at ten Eastern. Uh, what can you tell us about New Japan Strong? Ah, uh, I'm still kind of under wraps here until the press <laughs> conference, but um, uh, I can tell you that it's going to be something that I think people, a lot of people have been wanting and a lot of people have kind of guessed correctly on what it is. Um, I think, uh, you know, the Lions Break show was a great indication of like what New Japan can do um, while we're in this, this kind of COVID situation, you know, and, I, and, and that feedback was so good. Um, obviously, there wasn't like a ton of star power on that show, um, but I feel like uh, the show itself w- was a great show and great, you know, it was really put together well. And um, I, th- you know, a lot of feedback from a lot of different sources, fans and writers and just saying like, oh, this is my new favorite show. Uh, you know, it's easy to digest. You know, it was only 30 minutes. And, um, you know, there wasn't like, oh, it wasn't overly complicated. It was just like, you can pop it on and then, you know, get it done. 
and feel good about it and then be excited for next week. So um, I think uh, New Japan Strong will, will, will continue to f hopefully fill that role. Yeah. Absolutely. And, uh, my and uh, two last questions. Uh, one, New Japan last year, they announced uh, New Japan uh, America, New Japan US. Do you see that in the Japanese, uh, subs you know, the, the Japanese company and the US subsidiary being separate entities um, with, with separate talent rosters or? Um, I, I don't think they will actually be like fully separated because mm -hmm. obviously like the Japanese side is so important to what New right. Japan is, especially in America. You know, I, I feel like, uh, you know, whenever we come to America, of course, like uh, American fans are, are happy to see the, the U.S. wrestlers, but I, they're even more excited to see the Japanese wrestlers. So I feel like, you know, that will always be important. I think that the way it's presented there's going to be probably, you know, I think the goal of New Japan America is to is to find a way to present it in a way that um, your casual wrestling fan will enjoy, you know. So, but like, but keep all the elements that w are are you know that keep it different from everybody else, you know, if that makes sense. So I feel like, um, you know, it's more in like presentation and like, uh, you know, because just different countries do different things. So like the way that they do meet and greets in Japan might be not be the exact way that, uh, you know, the Americans are used to doing meet and greets and the way that they like to do meet and greets. So it's like little things like that, that are important so the, to the fan experience. Um, and, and obviously like uh, being kind of a, like, I think it's a, obviously a very budding company. We're just kind of getting started. We, you know, we got our feet in the ground a little bit over the last couple of years, but I, I feel like, you know, it, it took 40 years to get new Japan to where it is, you know? So I think like, you know, this is for the long term. So it's, you know, it's going to take a while to get it, to figure it all out and make some customs changes, you know, in the way that Japan does it or the way that America is going to do it. So, um, you know, we, it, it, it's going to be trial and error. And uh, I, I hope that people will understand that and fans will understand that and be with us for the long run because the product is so good and the in-ring is so good. Um, the presentation and stuff, we'll, we'll get there and uh, with everybody's support. So, uh, you know, thank you for everybody who's, who supported us this far. And a lot of people said that New Japan America was dead, but I feel like uh, it, it, just, it keeps going and it keeps growing stronger. And, and we can see a lot of um, feedback on the, on the back end, you know, and uh, it's very, very far from dead. So, so I feel like, uh, you know, we'll see what happens in the next couple of years. Yeah, absolutely. And my last question with Talk and Shop Mania this Saturday, with that, eclectic group of talent is it do you have one story that you can share with us that you haven't told yet that happened on the set of of the of the event I, I mean I, I've said this I don't know where I said it. I don't know if I said it on our podcast though but it's my favorite story okay so so okay so like say we I, I can't remember what day we filmed it but like say we all came in on a Tuesday or Tuesday night and then Wednesday was like the first shoot day and then Thursday was the second shoot day, but like pretty much Wednesday, Wednesday was like the big shoot day. So like people started to come in from the West Coast and everything like Friday night, or sorry, Tuesday night, let's just say. And, uh, and you know, a lot of pe friends, all, like pretty much everybody on here is all friends. So like, they, you know, some people came and stayed with Gallows, you know, he has this huge house, he has a bunch of rooms. So like they came in and, um, and we, I came in that same day, me, Carl and Gals, we had a little meeting. We kind of going over like what we're going to do tomorrow with the director because he had gotten there and everything. So like once I left and I said, and Carl went to bed, I guess Gallows and some of the, some of the wrestlers stayed up pretty late drinking and exchanging stories. Everybody's been quarantining this whole time, you know, so like everybody was excited to see each other. And so much that we had an eight o'clock uh, uh, call time. I show up at Gals's house at 8, 8 a.m. Me and me and Carl are hanging out and we're like, I'm like, where's where's the big man? He's like, I don't know. I've been texting him all morning. He had no no answer. No, I was like, what's going on? He's like, like, so later on, you know, finally Gallows wakes up like or about two hours later, starts getting going. He gets his coffee and everything in. Looks terrible. We're like, what happened yesterday? He's like, oh. I might have had uh, a couple too many brother drinks with the other brothers. I'm like, oh, okay, I okay. guess. So we finally get going. Then we later find out from Gallows' wife, who, who's telling the story, and we were kind of making fun of Gallows. And, and she's like, uh, she's like, yeah, he was asleep. And I told him, Rocky and Ch and Chad Carl are waiting for you downstairs. Uh, you know, everybody's here. They're ready to go. And he and he rolled over and said, 
why are they here? What for? And she's like, the pay-per-view that you booked in our backyard. And he's like, oh shit, that's today. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like a shop of and it almost didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> Just turned into a big party. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, Rocky, thank you so much. Uh, Talking Shop of Mania on pay-per-view. The worst pay-per-view ever. You got to check it out. It's on Fight TV pay-per-view. Uh, 6 p.m. Pacific Live uh, premieres August 1st, 2020. You can purchase it for $14.99. Don't be a nerd. Buy the pay-per-view. And Rocky, thank you for joining us. Thanks so much for your time. I appreciate it. All right.